Today, I'm painting models from Eldritch Foundry. Toothink, translucent, leaves visible brush strokes, an even application, or just not as good as it looks in the bottle. There is no such thing as the perfect paint. But then I heard about a new paint line and their impossible paints. These paints claim to be the perfect consistency straight out of the bottle, have amazing coverage, vibrant saturation, and pigmentation, and thin down to a glaze like a dream. But here's the thing. That doesn't sound possible, right? I'm talking about 1001's Ultra Krill paint, which is currently available on Kickstarter right now. The guys at 1001 Labs were kind enough to send me several paints to try to put their claims to the test. First, a bit about these paints. The paints come in 20 milliliter bottles and come in a regular set and a mono pigmented set. The regular paints feature maximal opacity through optimal pigment selection and mixtures. These are ideal for everyday hobby painters. Their mono pigmented paints use a single pure pigment. Depending on the pigment, the opacity could vary. These paints are perfect for experienced and professional painters who are not afraid of mixing. Overall, the Kickstarter includes 56 paints, 8 metallics, 8 fluorescents, 3 primers, and several mediums and thinners as well. Okay, let's paint some models. Ultra Acryl's goal was to create paints that did not need any thinning and could be used straight from the bottle. Creating a paint that is the perfect consistency from the bottle is not an impossible feat. It is the combination of thin consistency and good opacity that is difficult. To achieve better opacity, most paints use less medium, creating a thicker formula. This then requires the end user to thin their paint to the appropriate consistency, which can be time consuming and annoying. On the other hand, paints that have a thinner consistency right out of the bottle usually have lower opacity, meaning you'll be left with thin paints that require multiple coats. But how do you know what a good consistency is? You want the paint to flow off the brush with the lightest of touches, while still being as opaque as possible. If you can see plow throw lines left behind by the paint, you need to add water or thinner medium to thin it down. Here you can see the difference between each of these paints in my palette, and then on my hand as well. Ultra Krill, Pro Krill, and Reaper all have great consistency out of the bottle. Chimera, on the other hand, is quite thick and requires thinning to use effectively. While having a good consistency is wonderful, the real secret is opacity and saturation. Creating the right consistency can be learned, and once it's learned, you can make almost any paint usable. However, that's not how it works with opacity. Opacity has to come from the paint itself. Of course, you can add white to increase opacity, but you're still going to have to go back over it with your chosen color to achieve the final color you wanted. Anyway, Looking back at our previous hand swatch, you can see the relation between consistency and opacity. Chimera is very thick, but also very opaque, while Reaper is very thin and rather translucent. So let's test some of our paints and compare them to other brands. Okay, I'm very impressed. Ultra Acryl Opacity is... wow. My Chimera Magenta is my absolute favorite paint, and I might actually like the Ultra Acryl Magenta... better? And look at this yellow. Seriously, the most opaque yellow I've ever seen. Even their black and white is impressive. The fluorescent paint I was sent is definitely more opaque than my other fluorescent paints, but it's not as impressive as the other colors. So while these paints have passed our initial testing with flying colors, let's do some in-the-field testing. There's nothing worse than designing an amazing new Dungeons & Dragons character and not being able to find a model to go with it. 
So that's why I'm so excited to talk about this week's sponsor, Eldritch Foundry. Eldritch Foundry is a web-based character creator that allows you to design, customize, and create the totally unique miniatures of your dreams. Eldritch Foundry has so many options, like different and unique races, a wide variety of clothing and accessories, and even the ability to edit the tiny minutia of your character's expression and body type. Choose between purchasing an STL and printing at home, or let Eldritch Foundry print your model for you on their state-of-the-art printers that print better than anything you could do at home. Want to create more models? Join Eldritch Unlimited, where you can create as many custom models as you want per month. Eldritch Unlimited is incredibly affordable, paying for itself after only two models per month. Bring your D&D characters to life using Eldritch Foundry. Check out Eldritch Foundry today and use LilaMev15 at checkout for a 15% discount. Thanks so much, Eldritch Foundry. Let's get back to painting. The first color I'm using is this fluorescent orange. Fluorescent colors are notoriously difficult to produce and work with and should be applied over a white base coat to help with said problems, which I'm not doing. Instead, I'm going to test how the paint layers up on a non-white base color. This fluoro paint is drying very quickly, and going back over it is causing paint strokes and texture. I'm starting to think that this might be a thing to watch out for with fluorescent colors, because this is exactly what happened on my Golden Demon piece. Perhaps there is a fluorescent learning curve that I have not yet met. Next, I'm mixing magenta in with my fluorescent orange color. The fluorescent color is definitely affecting the opacity and drying time of this mixture, and you can still see the brush strokes here in this paint. I was so impressed with some of the other colors, I think I'm going to set this one aside for a little bit and test out those other colors and see how I like them instead. The black, blue, and green all went on smooth as butter with no difficulties. Smooth application, no brush strokes, all went great. The opacity is amazing, and even in areas where I applied layers upon layers of paint, the application is still quite smooth. So, so far, everything except the fluorescent is living up to all expectations. After a lot more work, I'm still not happy with the fluorescent colors on this dress. So at this point, let's do an airbrush test. I'm going for a glaze consistency since I already have a decent gradation for my brush. I'm loading a 50-50 mix of my vibrant orange and magenta into the airbrush, then two drops of thinner. I'm aiming to smooth out the gradation under the curve of her backside and above where her dress flares out at her ankles. Then I'll go back in with some black and purple to darken down the color already in my airbrush and apply a shadow right at the deepest part of the curved fabric. Okay, this paint is applying smoothly and evenly exactly how I would expect. Time for glazing. The fluorescent is thinning down like a dream and it's building up well. I think the key for fluorescence is just to apply them and not touch them. Let's try some detail work. I'm dotting in the eyes using the Ultra Krill Black and White with a brush with a great tip. One thing I'm noticing is the importance of using a wet brush. This paint is hanging onto the hairs of the brush a lot more than I'm used to, and it doesn't really want to flow off the brush. However, as long as my brush is damp enough, the paint is flowing off perfect. Final thoughts. We started this video listing the impossible claims that this paint brand made. So, did they live up to it? In my opinion, yes. I really like this paint. I like this paint so much that I'm going to go back it on Kickstarter so I can get more. I have never done that with any other brand of paint that has been sent to me for promotion. 
The consistency is great, opacity is amazing, and the saturation is all as good as claimed. The only paint I'm a little hesitant on is the fluorescent paints. It seems like any color I mix into the fluorescent paint picked up that annoying tendency to show brush strokes. Though I'm sure that that is a learning curve for me and not necessarily on the paints. If you love fluorescent paints and are skilled in their use, then these are more opaque than other fluorescent paints I've seen. And so they might be perfect for you. But if you are new and hoping for the same magic that we see in the rest of the set, you'll be disappointed. Don't forget to check out Ultra Krill on Kickstarter right now, as well as design your custom miniature on Eldritch Foundry. If you like what I do, go support me on Patreon. Thanks so much. See you next time.